Good morning. Are you awake? <laughs> Even though we've got the lights off. That is for a specific reason here. We're going to leave them off for just a moment. If you're in the foyer, I'd ask you to come in, find a seat. We've got um, an exciting service and lots of good things to share with you this morning. Right now, they're um, teeing up a video for LifeWise. It's called Christian Story. And it is an awesome testimony to what the LifeWise program does in our school system. So if you'll uh, turn your attention to the screen, we're going to have that video. Thank you all. So we got the flyer in the mail, and I'd never heard of, like, a Bible-based program. And I just felt like it cannot hurt. Christian was brand new to even the word Bible. Christian was very interested in where church was and what it was. So Christian didn't grow up in church, but he's kind of always had this hunger. He was in LifeWise and he was coming home and telling me stories, so excited about it. It's his favorite part of the day. And he's like, I want to go to church. And I'm like, oh, okay. And Mrs. Romer reached out to me and was like, hey, I just wanted to invite you and your family to church. This is around like September of 2021. And we went and we loved it. And so now we're regularly attending that church. Sure enough, they end up coming to our church and God's doing some really cool things in their family. But then also uh, their son, Christian, uh, he's having a big impact. I talked all about Jesus and how he paid the price for our sins. And now we can, our relationship with God is restored because of his death on the cross. So, and that was kind of how I ended it. Well, I walk away and this boy named Christian um, brings over a small group leader and he wants to talk with me. He comes up to me and he's like, Mr. Mark, um, I just, I, you know, I heard what you talked about and I just want to make sure you know that Jesus rose again. Did you know that? Like three days later, he, he rose and he's alive. And I said, Christian, I was like, Yes, I did know that, and I'm so excited that you know that. I mean, really, it's it's changed the life of our whole family. We're going to church every Sunday. You know, Christian gave his life to God in his last day of life-wise. He needed somebody to pay for our sins, so he let it, God let it, him live a long life, and then he had it to die because he had it to pay, f um, he had it, somebody had it to, die for our sins. You know, to think if I hadn't signed him up, I don't even know what our lives would look like. And like our story, it might not just be, you know, 20 minutes in a classroom. It might lead somebody to a church and change a whole household. And that's what it's all about. So the LifeWise program I'm so grateful for Miss Shirley Connor back here in the back. Yes. She spearheaded that initiative for the Lancaster City Schools, and she is a member here at the River, that we can be a part of that, as every church in our community can be a part. They are needing volunteers for everything. This is not funded by public funds. So this is private donations from churches, and believers like you to sow financially into that, but also with your time and your efforts. So they need school teachers, bus drivers, um, everything you can imagine to take care of these children. And you can see what that does by this video. I love that video and how that can really change the lives of the people in our community that may never dawn the door of our church or any other church for that matter. It can change their life. So I'd ask you to go see Miss Shirley after service and just take a look at what she's got on her table out there. Um, I'd shared a, a newspaper article that I saw in Logan about front page about what a change that that program is making in the Logan schools. So take a look at that. That's pretty cool. Um, Revive Ohio. This is a program that we shared with you a few months ago now. Um, they're doing a training event on Saturday, June 17th from 830 to 1 at Grace Community Church, which is on East Main Street, 904 East Main. This is an opportunity for um, us to get training on exactly what that um, 
what will be accomplished in the week that they're um, having that production, that um, event here in Fairfield County to touch Ohio, touch our community and the residents here. Um, kind of, it's not related in any way to LifeWise, but at the same time, its initiative is similar. We're evangelizing and spreading the gospel and pulling people out of the depths of hell by your hand to a hand and your greeting and saying, you know, somebody loves you and we care about you and just spending time with somebody. So that training is happening on Saturday, June 17th. There is a table in the foyer also for that. The event dates are August 20th through the 26th and it's open to everyone. There's no registration required to attend that. Um, Passion School of Ministry is beginning Tuesday, July 11th, 6 to 8 um, through August 1st. So an awesome opportunity for you to become involved with that. This particular session is Be Free Indeed. So you can get free and learn how to help break others out of the bondage that holds them back. And then weapon safety registration is going on now for the June 24th Weapon Safety 101. So if you'd like to be more comfortable with your firearm, learn how to use it, um, that is a, a great day to do that. Jim um, Lipka will be at the Hayloft after service if you'd like to learn more about that. And the River North, um, if you were here this past Sunday, you got to hear an awesome message from the River North pastor. And did he ever set the house on fire? Amen. It was a great time, but he sh had shared something that happened in their, their church, in their building. They had a flood in the basement, and essentially it caused about $75,000 worth of damage in the basement, of which 25000 ish was covered by insurance. So they have a $50,000 shortfall to restore that space to what it was before, and I believe that God can restore it better than it was before. Amen? So we have an opportunity to sow into that ministry and bless them um, for that restoration. And I believe that your dollar will be multiplied and it will do more than we could ask or think when we put it in God's kingdom that he will do amazing things with it, right? And th that's a lot of announcements really fast. So I hope you got all that. But um, I would like to ask... Pastor Paul and Miss Paula to come up for a special presentation. Good morning. You see this smile on my face? It's about ten times as big on the inside. <laughs> Wore my pink shirt in honor of our brand new grandbaby number two, Sayla Array Williams. Next to welcoming new souls into the kingdom, this is one of the greatest joys of a, in the life of a pastor. And... Look at her real good because she'll never be that little again. Get that, get her, get her on camera. That's, that's as little as she'll ever get. I was trying to put this size three on this size five boy this morning. And I, and I told him, I said, boys grow and shirts don't. Right? Yep. I just want to give the Lord thanks also. Um, there's a little sign in my house that says, what's the sign? I always get it wrong. I, I, still remember the, I still remember the day that I pray for the things that I have now. I still remember the day that I prayed for the things that I have now. And uh, while we're just elated and our hearts are exploding, uh, we're so tender because of God's mercy toward us and his grace toward us and his wonderful gift of life toward our family. And uh, 
they belong to y'all too. We're all a family. This is y'all's new baby too. We're going to dedicate another little baby today, another special baby, little Daffodil. She's up here singing today with her headphones on. But it's a special day in my heart. And uh, I just, for those of you, bring Daffodil over here for, oh, look, y'all, bring those babies. Just bring those babies out here a minute. This is the way we do it, y'all. We just bring our babies up here in their little papooses, and we just teach them to worship God when they're two months old. (laughs) These are our worship leaders with their babies on their tummies. But um, y'all can say, yeah, yeah, whatever y'all want to do. But for those of you who weren't here when I announced the the meaning of Selah's name, Selah means pause in his presence. And you'll see Selah all through the Psalms. David was moving to a, from a, from a different, from a one place to another in his praise and worship, many times from a low place to a higher place. But always it meant to, pa, David was pausing in the presence of the Lord. Maybe sometimes just overwhelmed by his goodness that he had to, so overwhelmed that he had to pause. So Selah's name means pause in his presence. So that's, that's kind of what we're doing today. We're taking our time to introduce her to you. And her middle name comes from her mommy's middle name, Array, which means an extravagant display of beautiful things. And as Lindsay grew up, I started to notice how the meaning of her name took, kind of led the way, and she... When she puts a display together in the foyer or in the sanctuary, it's truly an extravagant display of beautiful things. Not many people like to follow behind her and try to decorate after she's done something. But uh, she's been gifted that way. And um, I just want to say thank the Lord for this precious new beginning. This is the way you should grow a church. This is the way to do it. We're good. Let's worship Jesus. Amen. This morning, back behind those walls right there, we were, the praise team was putting together their thoughts and our prayers and our worship. And Matt was just talking about the peace of God, the angel of the Lord that surrounds his people. Y'all can go ahead and stand. We're going to give God some praise. But as he talked, I just began to picture Christmas and what it was always like at my nanny and granddad's house when everybody finally got home. We saw a side of my granddad that we never saw through the year. When all of his kids were finally at home sitting around the fireplace, he brought the great big penny jar out, quarter jar. He saved his coins all year. And he would throw those coins, and it was a free-for-all between eight grandchildren. We were in the floor wrestling and fighting for it, and my granddad was laughing his head off watching those boys get most of the money. Only three little girls. But but Casey went ahead to say, he said, you know, I'm kind of picturing the same thing. It's Christmas in a small family, and on Christmas morning, you kind of just let the kids have a free-for-all. They come into the room, and they just start tearing into their stuff. And when you get a little bit bigger family, you kind of get some structure. That's kind of what we've done right here. We've kind of got a little infrastructure, but sometimes we get a little too focused on it. So this morning, I want us to come into this house... And I want us to rip into our prizes. I want us to rip into what the Lord has prepared for us. As children, let's just kind of forget about the infrastructure and the and the order, so to speak. We will have order, make no mistake. But let's just forget about doing it one at a time. And let's just all jump in here and open up what God has for us. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He gave his only son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Give Jesus a hand clap and a shout of praise.
John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him, that's you yes, sir. and me. Yeah. I'm a whosoever. How about you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Would not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Today, Joshua Peck is moving from a life of death, a life of sin, to eternal life. He has repented of his sins. Wednesday night, he got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And today, he's going down in a watery grave. His sins to be remembered no more. Washed away. Yep. You won't say anything? No. Hallelujah. Oh, you're good. Put your hands together, Rachel. Get up this way a little bit. No, you're fine. It don't matter. I don't want you to hit your head. There you go. Hallelujah. believe in miracles? This is the greatest miracle you'll ever see in your life. A soul redeemed. Joshua Peck, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the Holy Ghost.
is my portion. Let's sing it. With me in the valley, with me in the fire, with me in the storm. And all my life, testify. Hallelujah. We are not.
turn to someone and tell them, I am a child of God. Hallelujah. I am a child of God. I know who I am. I know who I am today in this room. Captives are free. Amen. Free. We used to sing free at last, free at last. Praise God Almighty, I'm free at last. It doesn't matter what kind of bondage, what kind of slavery, what kind of addiction you've been under, you can be free indeed. You can be free. The Lord Jesus holds the keys to your prison. You can praise your way out. You can be delivered. You can be set free. No longer a slave, but a child of God. You just witnessed what the Bible calls new birth. New birth. You might be eight or 80, and you can be born again. I don't know how old Nicodemus was when he ran into Jesus at night. And he said, you must be born again. And Nicodemus didn't understand. He's like, well, how's that going to happen? That's not possible, Jesus. And Jesus said, it's not about being born again of the flesh, but of the spirit. You must be born again. It's not optional. Say, so, well, it... You know, it's good for everybody else, but I don't know about me. Not optional. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, you didn't choose me. I've chosen you. you. You've already been chosen. I mean, you can sit there and, you know, debate and ponder, but it's going to happen. He's chosen you. We are loved. Loved. I love these songs that brought us to this point in the spirit today together. We're, we're here in unity. We're here together. And we've been on a journey for two or three songs to get to where we are right now in the spirit realm. And I want... Daphne to bring her mom and dad and grandparents. Bring them over here, Daphne. Daphne Robbins. Would you look at that? It's amazing. We've got grandparents here today, aunts and cousins. And other members of the family that I don't even know. But we're here, aren't we? Amen. Don't you love family? Look at this great family. Amen. And, and Rock and Robin. I love that name. All right. Come on in. Hey. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Bless you. According to the scripture, um, what you saw here with Josh was baptism. It means to immerse. That's the literal definition of baptism. Some groups refer to what we're doing here with the baby as baptism, but it, scripturally it's not baptism, it's a dedication to the Lord. We're not going to put her under that water until she's 
fully ready and accountable for her sins and she'll come to Jesus and she'll feel his power touch her life and she'll want to be baptized. But as I was praying about this dedication and pondering this, the first thing I want to emphasize is the miracle. For years we prayed and it seemed impossible <laughs> but God for with God all things are possible amen and Daphne will have a testimony that I don't have as she grows up and she'll tell people I'm here on purpose because God answered my mom and dad and grandparents and pastors and church family prayers. Amen? I'm an answer to prayer. That's what you'll say. The second thing the Lord really impressed on me is there's no greater picture for the church family than the picture of a newborn baby in front of all of us to show us the way to be the child of God. As you father her, your heavenly father fathers you and all of us. And as you mother her, the church is called the mother. God our father, the church the mother. And it's that nuclear family that's so powerful. And we were singing today, uh, no longer a slave. I have a father. He knows my name. And if you grew up without an earthly father, that song takes on a whole different meaning. And the beautiful thing about the church body and the way God establishes and sets the solitary into families is that Daphne will never have to talk about the absence of a father because you've committed your ways to the Lord and she was born in covenant and that's God's plan. Amen? And, and some of us missed that and some of us didn't experience that but we don't stop talking about it. It's the reality that in the beginning God created Adam took a rib from his side and gave him a help me to woman and that woman and that man made all of creation as we know it in the human race was formed by God's hand through a man and a woman and that miracle keeps on coming and we get to have Daphne <laughs> and she's going to grow up in the fear and admonition of the Lord amen, amen. so today we have a prayer of blessing for her, but our, our real focus in terms of admonition, she won't remember, but these parents and aunts and uncles and grandparents will remember the admonition. So it's really, a lot of this is for us. Amen? Amen. So our prayer is not only for Daphne, but we will anoint mom and dad and believe that God will empower them and bless them. As you place her into the hands of the priesthood of this house, the Lord receives her as his property, as his gift from your hands to his. Today, Lord, we dedicate this temple of the living God to you. We say that her hands and her feet, her voice... Every breath she breathes would breathe out your glory in the earth. That as she learns to talk, she will give praise and honor to you. She will speak the word of God like no other in her generation. She'll have a voice for you. She'll be like a trumpet in the earth. Uh, she, she will sound the alarm for her generation. She will be an example of your 
power and your love and your glory. And we dedicate her for this cause. Her hands will be healing hands. Her feet will go in places to serve. And she will be blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Blessed coming and going. She will be blessed in all that she does. And those that she touches will be blessed by her. And as these parents have given her to you, now you, Lord, give her to them, entrusting them to be stewards of her life. Uh, the gift that is from the Lord. Remember, she was his first. When you run into difficulties, situations, and circumstances, uh, know that he, she was his first. Uh, know that before the foundation of the world, he saw her in him, and he saw her in you, and you have come together and created this beautiful thing, and now God trusts you. You are the mother he chose for her. You are the father he has chosen for her. It is no accident. You are divinely ordained and ordered this day. From this day forth, you will be the voice of the Lord in her life until she learns to hear him for herself. She will see you and see you as Jesus. You're the Jesus she will know. And she will love him if you continue to love him and love each other. And love each other. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Good to see you. Bless you. Love you. Love you. Thanks for coming, guys. We have people from all over the country here, I think. How many states? Cincinnati? That's still in Ohio. It's, it's really close to Kentucky, right? And North Carolina? South Carolina? Virginia Beach? I'm getting all around it. Amen. Welcome, welcome. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for sharing this precious moment with us. I'm still overcome by that worship moment, that dedication, and better to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than anywhere else. So. I, I like what, <clears throat> what Paula said on that sign of like, I still remember the days when I prayed for the things I have now. And it makes me think a problem has to be achieved, but a promise has to be received. And before any battle, any difficulty you've ever faced, there's been a solution because the lamb was slain before the foundations of the world. And so you, you can know as you face difficulties in your life, whether that be sickness, sin, demonic oppression, poverty, Jesus is the answer. He's always been the answer. And there's this thing that happened with Noah and the flooding of the earth where God pointed his bow downward to judge the sin of man. And after that all, he pointed a, a bow upward saying, next time I won't judge man, but I will be judged in your place. I will be the one pierced. And this bow pointed upwards. And this declaration today is about that promise. We're gonna stand and we're gonna declare the solution, Jesus, pierced for our transgressions. Because every problem you face, he is the answer. And we praise God for, for the cancer that was shrunk in Sean Canoodala. We, we praise God for the pregnancies and all that, the healing, we give him praise.
So let's do this. Let's declare God's word and do God's word. We're going to live it out and give him praise all our days. So we have, have the slide up here and we'll repeat together. So I declare that there is power in a seed. Galatians 6 says that what I sow, I will reap as I give tithe and sow my offering as a seed back to God. I anticipate an abundant harvest in Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to read this one as well because it's really good. (laughs) I declare that as sure as God's rainbow in the clouds, my covenant is established in him. I believe his promises to me are yes and amen. This is my covenant kept in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love that. Woo!